the Canadian countryside. It has its perks. For example, the air doesn't. The air isn't terrible, except during except during summer, where sometimes the where sometimes the stale, stiff air from the cow farms is let out and it smells like shit everywhere and i notice because during that time period i usually go to school on my bike i'm able to see stars and generally not have the major effects of shitty traffic however it runs a little bit more deep so this is a video about things i hate about the countryside yes even with all its perks, there's some things that I disagree with, and they're absolutely terrible, and I wish I could change. For good. On to the video. So, the thir first thing that I, th that I don't like about the countryside is that when there's a power outage, you know, in cities, usually it lasts like a couple of minutes or something, you know, something not that terrible. But where I live, when there's a power outage, it lasts for hours. It lasts for hours. And if you don't have like a data or something, you well, uh, you're, you're, you're effed, dude. You're, you're effed. I have nothing to say to you. So basically, if some dumbass just accidentally drives into a telephone portal or something, or a, or, or a, a snowstorm like destroys some wires or something, or freezes up an entire building, it, it cause it, where the, all of the electricity is managed or whatever, and it freezes some people in electronics, well, you can expect a power outage that will expect that will last for hours, maybe even a day. You know, for for part number two, I just want to say, yeah, the countryside has its fair share of nice people. You know, people that can be very friendly, like Farmer Joe right across the street or something. But it also has its fair share of idiots. And a lot of them are people my age. Not to shit on my generation. But a lot of the terrible people are, are on my age. And also, we also have a lot of people that are just straight up stupid. Like, like, uh, you know the power outage thing I was talking about earlier? Well, you could have some shit lazy driver that just ran, that, that, that just forgot to put his, uh, that just forgot to put his winter tires on, and then, and then uh, he tried to turn, and then he smashes into a pole, blacking out the whole town for, like, f for, like, 14 hours. Like, like a few days ago, like Friday, I saw like the I saw two examples of terrible driving. Like when my bus was at like this, uh, like this thing is like a the three way intersection with the stop signs, you know. And then uh, and then this random guy, all right, he trespasses on like our bus is like at the stop sign or whatever. And then it, and then the, there's this guy in his black jeep, all right. He so like there's. Right beside the intersection, all right, there's, like, this building, like, some sort of warehouse thing where, the, like, this thing with, like, a bunch of machinery and, like, this warehouse thing. And so this guy basically goes onto private property just to bypass the school uh, school bus. And for the second example of terrible driving I saw here is on is the later down the road when the, we were at the four-way intersection with the st with like the street lights about to turn like to go to the school another bad driver this guy this time in a Lincoln or something he, he this blue Lincoln SUV just passes by like on the, like on the parking lane where like right in front of the church you not only you disrespected the school bus but you disrespected the house of god like what is your problem dude oh yeah and more about the stupid idiots like you know like there's people my age who are at school they think they're all cool and they're all hot like they'll just straight up make stupid ass videos going like you know people who think they're hot or something even though they, they look like a French baked potato or <laughs> what? Like, they just look like the definition of 2008. My boy, my boy really be out here looking like roadkill right now. And now, for this part I'm about to talk about, it's gonna make the really, really, really country kids really, really mad. Alright? You don't need a pickup truck 
unless it's absolutely necessary for your job. That that's uh, that you saw the, my hat falling. That uh, that's the that's the amount of money in your bank account after you buy a useless ass pickup truck. I'm not. I'm not saying, like, listen back to what I'm saying. I don't say all people who drive pickup trucks are driving a, a unnecessarily expensive vehicle. I'm saying only the people who don't really need it, like, only the people who really need it need, should buy a pickup truck. And, and for those, like, let me give you an example of someone who absolutely needs to have a pickup truck. Like someone working like in construction or like heavy industry where they have to move around day on a daily basis. Heavy, heavy, heavy objects like bricks or like machinery or something. Not just moving your bratty kid's bicycle once every six months. Like my dad's Ford C Max can do the can do the exact same thing about moving bicycles once every six months perfectly fine. You don't need a big pickup truck to do the job. But but my dad has big driveway and during winter um I have to drive out of there and I and I need to pick up truck. Well if well if you if you really need to get out of your driveway and there's a lot of snow, just use that like forty thousand dollar snow blower that that you that you just purchased like five weeks ago because you broke your other five ones like five months ago or something, or maybe even better, just use those two bratty kids of yours with put give them shovels and just shovel the way for you before you drive your fourteen year old daughter Jasmine into his sixty year old boyfriend's house named Jonathan or whatever so that they can do the hangy hangy at the back of the horse stable. Like, you know, you don't really need pickup checks to move through rough terrain. Like just a shovel, some salt in and a and your and a some two thousand and some two thousand not Honda Civic will do the job. Oh yeah, and because of you buying us some use some pickup truck for no reason other than it looks cool, you're literally posing a threat to human life itself. So let me give you a comparison. So you have this 2000 Honda Civic right here, and then you have the 2023 Dodge Ram. Let me let, let's play a game. Which car is heavier? Do, 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 do. Hooray, you guys the answer. The Ram is heavier. Want to know why? Because it's some big vehicle that is super big meant to carry around heavy machinery. And if you don't really need it and you get into an and if you don't really need it, you're you're literally buying a death machine. Like let me give you a situation, all right? So, you're about to enter an intersection and you're in your and you're in your lifted Dodge Ram. That you bought like two weeks ago, and you spend like two hundred thousand dollars on. You you look at your phone for like five seconds, and then when you enter the intersection, what do you know? Now your windshield's covered with blood because you just ran over a small child. First of all, a pickup truck is already pretty high, but then you d lifted it, and now you can't see the kid at all. And and also you looked at your phone, rookie mistake, which lowered the chances of you seeing that little kid. And now you just killed a uh, now you just killed somebody. I'm really telling you, don't buy a pickup truck unless you need it. Oh yeah, and if you really need a pickup truck, let me get. Here's my advice. Don't don't buy like a 2023 Dodge Ram. A 2009, 2013 Dodge Ram could do this. Could, has very similar effects because when because it, it if you look at the 2013 model and the 2023 model, there's not really too many changes other than the main design. So here are the three things. One, uh, don't be an idiot. Two. Don't don't believe that you're a hot because for some reason the small towns have a propensity of being uh, of thinking of having little kids my age thinking that they are hot and number three if you're a white suburb if you're like a suburban dad or something don't buy a pickup truck just 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 use your wife's uh, just drive around your wife's two thousand 
2011 Ford Focus. It will, it, it will be just fine. So, in conclusion, I took off my hat, and con- the countryside, all right, it has a lot, a lot of perks, but it also has a lot of things to 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 clown on them about. Now I'm gonna uh, go on my way to to drive around my Ford F one fifty and run over small children after adopting a brand new pit bull named Princess, who who was previously given up by by her previous owners for mauling small children. Waiter, more kids, please. <sighs> That's to be a great tragedy.